It's about time for a news update. My name is Titi Laya Oinson. We begin at the Nigeria Senate, which has waded into allegations of assault leveled against chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Dan Ladi Omar. The petition against CCT chairman was brought to the floor by Senate Estefanos Giang, who alleged that Justice Omar assaulted the petitioner, brutalized him, and slapped him on the face. The petitioner also said that he was forced to kneel while the CCT uh, chairman kicked him on the chest, inflicting bodily harm on him. The petitioner is seeking the arrest and prosecution of Mr. Umar for his actions in order to ensure justice for Mr. Clement Kagwak. The petition has ref been referred to the Senate Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions for investigation. Chairman of the Court of Conduct Tribunal, Danladi Umar, on 29th day of March 2021 at Banex Plaza in Abuja. The petitioner is alleging that Justice Omar Danladi uh, assaulted him, brutalized him, and slapped him on the face and asked him to kneel down and thereby use his leg to hit him on the chest and inflicted bodily harm on him and is asking this Senate... Moving on now, talking security, police in Zamfara State say 30 bandits have been killed in simultaneous gunfire in four communities in Maradun and Bukhara local government areas of the state. The communities are Gobuira, Gora, Rini and Madoti Dankule villages of Maradun and Bakura local government areas, respectively. The uh, police say some of the bandits escaped the forest and with gunshot wounds, and a press st statement signed by the public relations officer of the command, Superintendent Shehu Mohammed, says 10 locals from the affected communities were killed by the criminals. Police authorities in the state and joint operatives of the command to defend themselves aggressively in any engagement with bandits and ensure that they dominate the ungoverned spaces on a continuous basis. The Zamfara Police Command have appealed to amend bandits to surrender their arms and toe the path of peace or face unpredictable consequences. In Taraba State, bandits have killed a soldier, wounded three others in an ambush attack. The chairman of Takum local government, who disclosed this from the deployment of troops to the area, he explained that the victims were attacked in Kofia Adamu village of Takum local government earlier yesterday by suspected militia, while the wounded are receiving medical attention at an undisclosed hospital. Tension now pervades the community as residents in their numbers are relocating to safer areas for fear of military action. When contacted, the PPRO of the state command, David Misai, said the command was yet to have been briefed on any developments by Takum Division. Troops of Operation Safe Haven, keeping the peace in parts of southern Kaduna and Plato states, have arrested a suspected bandit in Jangiri. That's in Jema local government area of Kaduna State. The, sus the suspect, Hussein Daimena, is wanted by, or rather wanted for spearheading attacks on Uguanbido community, which led to the death of six persons in 2020. Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Anguan, says Hussein Dambina is an associate of another notorious gang of bandits who were arrested earlier in the month. He says the troops also foiled attempts to kidnap commuters along the troubled Udawa Burkuru Road in Chukun local government area. And that's all we have time for when it comes to the news. Welcome back. It's about time for us to take a quick look at what's happening on the covers of the newspapers this morning. Now, I'm going to be starting with the Punch newspaper at this point. Today is Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. The headline is this. IPOP Masop Members Asylum. P Federal government may summon British envoy Ohaneze Afeniferi back UK. 
and uh, UK plans amnesty for persecuted IPOP MASOP members, according to the Home Office. Asylum plan disrespectful to Nigeria. It's sabotage, says Lai Mohammed. Moving uh, down to the bottom of the page here, it says PDP plans appeal as Ondo Tribunal declares Akira Dolu poll winner. OAU counsels parents as undergraduate commits suicide. Four children, a farmer abducted by suspected herdsmen in Oyo. CCT chair faces Senate probe over assault on guard. Ritualist murder man on man six days to wedding, collect ransom, dismember victim, and air power, ground troops. Others need to wipe out bandits, according to El Rufai. That's what we have on the cover of The Punch. We also have The Nation newspaper here, and the major headline says, experts unstable, Chad will worsen Nigeria's insecurity. It also says here, Debbie's death has created a vacuum in Boko Haram battle, says Buhari. Why insecurity persists, according to Fayami and Uzo Dima. And uh, why UK may consider asylum for IPOB MASOB members. It's disrespectful to Nigeria, it says here. Um, right at the top of the page here, presidency rules out national conference. Page 28 has more on that. Girls have higher kidnap value, says El Rufai. Uh, says here, tribunal dismisses Jegeda's flawed case. And insecurity can consume Southeast, Umahi warns. And that's what we have on the covers of the newspapers this morning. Yes, now we have been joined by Timmy Tokwa Alaosani, a registered dietitian and nutritionist with over five years clinical experience in the dietics profession and a proven track record in evidence-based nutrition education and, and counseling. She's a full member of the Nutrition Society of Nigeria and the Association of Nigerian Dietitians. Now, Tokwa is passionate about improving the health and well-being of people and individuals, and she will be talking about the three Threefold cord of nutrition, immune system, and COVID-19. Good morning, namesake. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Good to have you here Thank again. You. Thank you. So I mean, now after watching that Chronicles of a Foodie, <laughs> it's very important that we talk about immune systems and COVID-19 because remember when um, COVID-19 started uh, last year in Nigeria in full force, everybody was trying to look for what, what was the best thing mm -hmm. to do, everybody increasing the amounts of lemons, mm -hmm. vitamin mm -hmm. C. So let's talk about that. Yes. Okay, so COVID-19, of course, you know, it's a, it's a no, new kind of um, illness or disease, disease so to say. Right. Yeah. And yes, and you know, a lot of people noticed that there was something that, you know, kept coming and it's immune system because yeah. yes there's no cure but then your body can fight it yes. and one thing that was definitely in our faces was nutrition yeah. so this shows us that there is a like it's unarguable the yeah. relationship between nutrition food and you know covid 19 mm -hmm. and yes it's it's important because i mean life starts from nutrition everybody is actually nutrition your hair is nutrition your teeth is calcium is yeah. nutrition. your you know your body your blood is mm -hmm. everything is nutrition so nutrition is actually very very important yeah. and when we're talking about covid 19 we notice that people who have like underlying conditions yeah. like yeah. diabetes um hypertension they are more Hits, they are more likely to be you know, hardly hit by COVID-19. Yes. And these things are actually related to nutrition. Yes. Diabetes, for, for example, of course, you know that somebody who is obese or somebody who is overweight mm -hmm. is at a risk, higher risk higher of risk. developing diabetes. And then, of course, when we're talking about COVID-19, the and diabetes, you know, it's, it sort of like increases how much, you know, effects that the COVID-19 will have on that person. So nutrition yeah. is absolutely important. Okay. And I mean, in, in helping your immune system to function optimally. Yeah. When your immune system functions optimally, once COVID-19, if you're even exposed to the virus, it's able to sort of like defend you against yeah. it before, right. you know, it hits you. And then, yes, eating healthy, mm -hmm. I mean, like, like like we said before, eating vegetables, just like you mentioned, what we, what we <laughs> just watched. I mean, it's good to see that there was some kind of fruits and, you know, yeah. some sort of things in between. I mean, that's just the important thing. Mm -hmm. Always try to add some sort of color. And then where you get colors from are basically your fruits, fruits your vegetables, yeah. add it to every meal, no matter how... Um, 
calorie dense so, or you know <laughs> it's, easier. it's easier just try to create some space mm -hmm. for you know your fruits your red fruits yeah. your orange fruits mm -hmm. your yellow fruits yeah. basically think about it like a rainbow so you want to add more colors, colors. to your food I mean, white rice is white, right? Yes. Yam is white. Bread is white. How about we so put some exactly, red and let's add yellow some colors and, and just green. make it pop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So mm -hmm. that would actually, you know, support your immune system mm -hmm. and help you function optimally. Yeah. If at all you're exposed to um, the COVID-19 virus, yeah. your immune system is sort of like ready to uh, to defend you. Yeah. It's ready to attack, you know, mm -hmm. that virus. And even it works for other viruses as, as well. As well, yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely something we cannot. Over if we still have with us Tammy Tokwe Alao Sani, and we are talking about immune system and COVID 19. Yes, now before I went on a break, I did ask, um, like a starter pack, so to speak, <laughs> about um, of what people should take to boost their immune system in this period and generally. Yeah, yeah. okay, so basically, we have, um, I like I said, all fruits, all fruits are totally important, but then there's some like, um your fruits are high in vitamin C, like yeah. your citrus fruits, you know, your apples, mm -hmm. mangoes. It doesn't even have to be those exotic ones that, you know, we cannot really afford. afford or cannot, yeah. yeah, exactly. That the middleman, so to say, cannot, yeah. you know, afford. Even the local foods are absolutely nutritious and they would help you. They will actually help your immune system. Now, talking about vegetables, cruciferous vegetables are also something you want to make sure they are part of your diet. What are cruciferous vegetables? Yeah. I mean, things like cabbage, okay. you know, yes. And then when you eat cabbage with something like carrots it's like you're totally empowering your hmm. body honestly <laughs> it's like you're getting Our bodies yeah, to go it's to like, war. exactly it's like you're, you're activating the soldiers in your body so okay. they're like right on guard when you eat cross fresh vegetable mix it with something like um bit something that has bitter carotid like you know um um like carrots Carrot, yeah. also one thing that people do i feel like a lot of people do not know mm -hmm. is that when you actually have a healthy gut yeah. that's a healthy digestive system, system. your immune system is empowered to even you know work more okay. and how do you get you know a healthy gut mm -hmm. in, in include like probiotics prebiotics into yeah. your meals there are things you get from yogurt yes. you know things like um fermented foods basically so even something like ogi it sounds like what is ogi? Okay. Is, is it healthy? Is it nutritious? But yes, yeah. it could actually. But which one are you know? There's the yellow one. There's the yes. There's, there's the there's maize. The, there's the the maize. Yes, so they, they are all. So basically, all of them are like in the cereal family. family yes. yes. So they are very, very. They have very similar, you know, characteristics. Okay. Similar nutritional value as well. Okay. So no matter the one you're eating, the 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 idea is that it's fermented. Okay. So the millet yeah. is fermented. Yes. The maize is fermented. fermented yes. Yeah. And and those are things that actually you know activate those prebiotics. Yes. Probiotics, yes, in okay. your in your gut. So. Okay, and then you mentioned yogurt. Now, are we looking at Greek yogurt or sweet or sweetened basic yogurt? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> of course, I mean the unsweetened the yogurt, like the healthy. Yes, so we're talking okay. about the gut. But then once in a while, you can like to treat yourself. Don't treat yourself. <laughs> Just take. It. But yes, of course, the unsweetened yeah. yogurt, the mm -hmm. Greek yogurt, those are amazing and fantastic options. To, okay. You know, so um, so during the, the when the, when we were in lockdown, there was the whole lemon turmeric um ginger garlic yeah. so now are those are those things that you will still advise people are those um fruits vegetables that you still advise people to take or they should just um focus on vitamin c um fruits that are high mm. in vitamin c when you're trying to focus on covid19 oh I, I feel like absolutely you should even what even if there's a something that comes and say COVID-19 is gone today. Yeah. Those things are absolutely healthy, healthy and they should be a part of, it can be your routine, it can be part of your routine, routine because, yeah. I mean, it's like healthy roots. So mm -hmm. ginger, turmeric, mm -hmm. garlic, those things you can even cook with them. Yes. And they are full of something we call phytonutrients. Okay. They are full of antioxidants. Okay. Those things strengthen your body, they, you know, help you to live healthy. So yeah. yes, definitely, absolutely. You can continue, I mean, doing it as a routine. You can continue to take it. Okay, as thank long you. As long as you're doing it in moderation, of course. Of course. <laughs> Not too much. Thank you yeah. so much, Tokwe. It's always been, it's always a pleasure chatting with thank you, you here so on this show. So I'm sure we've got it as much information that we can still get more. You can use our hashtag, Wake Up Nigeria, on TVC, on um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, if you have questions for Tokwe. Welcome yeah. to the second lap of the number one family breakfast show on television and the 
first hour was quite an experience. And yeah. the next 45 minutes is definitely loading. Yeah. Loading. Loading. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> uh, it's like you're on that sugar high I was on during Chronicles of a Food. Yes. That sugar. Yeah. We need to talk about that sugar. But still so much more to come over the next 45 minutes. And uh, hey, we're glad that you decided to join us. As usual, every single edition is just made for you. So stay right there. Yes. And we have the fire breeder. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, Mother of dragons. Mother of dragons. Mm. Breathe on us. Yeah. <laughs> MM. Stay on the show. Mm. But mm. you can check out some of our previous episodes here in the kitchen with some of our yeah. amazing chefs. Just yeah. in case. You, and we're, hopefully, we're going to have one tomorrow. So fingers crossed, people. Mm. Give us more fire. Small yes, fire. <laughs> Let's save though. it for social media. <laughs> Let's save it for social that media. green she's wearing is just green amazing. with ah, envy. What? <laughs> There's loads to look out for <laughs> on the rest of this edition today. My name is Titi Laya Oyinso. And I am Tokwe Oloni. And I remember you can use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria across all social media platforms to be a part of the best breakfast show conversation. Yeah. Remember we talked about um, single friends yeah. and married friends. Are you a married friend like Titi and Emma? Huh? Or are you a single friend like me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh be a part goodness. of our conversation. Guys. Remember, you can always stream us live uh, from absolutely anywhere across the world. Just use our mobile app, download it from Google Play or iOS. Yes, we also implore you to follow us across all social media handles, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. At all platforms, it is TVC Connect. Yeah. What we have lined up, Titi, what are we doing this We still Monday? have the matchmaking industry is one which... Uh, you know, it's really, really creative and resilient. Well, it's where the creative and resilient reside. And um, we are going to be meeting Didi Womit. And that's a certified coach and relationship expert for Lagos Matchmaker. When it comes to the business of matchmaking over the past seven years, it's all about them. You need to make sure you stay put for that one. We're going to be talking about red flags and deal breakers. All right. It's funny, remember on Monday, we're talking about deal breakers mm. way at my house oh yeah <laughs> right i'm going to sit back relax uh, and, and enjoy the conversation yes. right <laughs> deal breakers mm. mm -hmm. oh more that red flag with the what's a red flag for one person might not be a red flag for someone else especially mm. if you you're if you're in a relationship with someone who you know you both share different mm. deal breakers like yeah. what's mm -hmm. your deal break your mm. deal breaker might be different from your partner's deal mm -hmm. breaker or yeah. stuff. Exactly. anyways mm -hmm. uh, all i know is that you might mm. have a deal breaker when you are single yeah. Yeah. and then when you are married it's mm. not breaking any deal your deal breaker <laughs> You may just compromise on it. You can not be, you know what, see, I don't like this, you know. But let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk that you used to set to leave because you're not breaking the deal. Yeah, I mean, well, all of these things change. Some Jerry. of those, okay, so some deal breakers have to do with finance. Some have to do with uh, fidelity. Some have to do with the kids, whether you want kids or not. Um, some have to do with how to handle family members, external mm -hmm. You know, in-laws. In in yeah. There's so many. So I feel like this topic is really wide. Yes, yes. Um, at, but on that note, we'll let you stew on that a little. And for us to take a news update right here on Wake Up Nigeria, my name is Titi Laya Oinso. We begin with security matters. And police in Zamfara State say 30 bandits have been killed in a simultaneous gun battle on four communities in Maradun and Bokura local government areas of the state. The communities are Gobi Rawa, Gora, Rini, and Madoti Dankule villages of Maradun and Bakura local government areas. The police say some of the bandits escaped to the forest with gunshot wounds, and a press statement signed by Public Relations Officer of the Command Superintendent Shehu Mohammed says 10 locals from the affected communities were killed by the criminals. Police authorities in the state. Uh, enjoined operatives of the command to defend themselves aggressively in any engagement with bandits and ensure that they dominate the ungoverned spaces on a continuous basis. The Zamfara Police Command have appealed to the armed bandits to surrender their arms and tow the path of peace or face unpredictable consequences. In Taraba State, bandits have killed a soldier, wounded three others in an ambush attack. The chairman of Takum local government area, who disclosed this, called for the deployment of troops to the area. He explained that the victims were attacked 
in Kofia Adamu village of Takum local government area earlier yesterday by suspected militia, while the wounded soldiers were now receiving medical attention at an undisclosed location. Tension now pervades the community as residents in their numbers are relocating to safer areas for fear of military action. When contacted, the PPRO of the State Command, David Misai, said the command was yet to be briefed on the development by Takum Division. The Nigerian Senate has waded into allegations of assault leveled against Chairman of Code of Conduct Tribunal, Danladi Umar. The petition against CCT Chairman was brought to the floor by Senator Isfanus Gyang, who alleged, or rather alleged, that Justice Umar assaulted the petitioner, brutalized him, and slapped him on the face. The petitioner also said that he was forced to kneel while CCT chairman kicked him on the chest, inflicting bodily harm on him. The petitioner is seeking the arrest and prosecution of Mr. Omar for his actions in order to ensure justice for Mr. Clement Kagwak. The petition was referred, or rather has been referred, to the Senate Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions for investigation. Chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, Dan Ladi Omar, on 29th day of March 2021 at Banex Plaza in Abuja. The petitioner is alleging that Justice Omar Dan Ladi uh, assaulted him, brutalized him, and slapped him on the face and asked him to kneel down and thereby use his leg to hit him on the chest and inflicted bodily harm on him. And, and that's all we have time for on the news update at this point. Welcome back. Now, this particular topic we're going to discuss today is one I've been looking forward to. The matchmaking industry is one in which only the creative and resilient survive. Meet Didi Edis. She is a certified coach and relationship expert for Lagos Matchmaker. She's been in the business of matchmaking for over seven years with a degree in economics from Howard University and a master's in international strategy from the University of St. Andrews. It's a wonder that she ventured into this industry. Today, we're talking about red flags and deal breakers. Now, first of all, red flags, deal breakers, aren't they the same thing? Yeah, lots of people they're the same thing. Okay. But they're kind of really different. Okay. Yeah. So a red flag is more of a hint, mm. you know, or a sign that something might be a problem. Okay. But a deal breaker is like an uncompromising factor, like something mm. you just will not deal with. Okay. So um, a red flag could be, you know, um, signs that, okay, this person might have a problem, but that's why the key word there is might. Okay. It might end up not being a problem. Okay. But a deal breaker is more certain. It's like, I'm not dealing with this and I can't. You know, deal breakers could be like a guy that hits you. Mm. You're like, there's no, that's not a red flag. That's clearly a deal breaker yeah. and I can't deal with that. So, so I, I'm wondering, what are the most common red flags and deal breakers that you've heard? And um, how are you able to work your way around them? Um, the most common one is age. A lot of people say I can't date someone younger than I am. Okay. And they feel like this is a deal breaker. But I don't think people really understand their deal breakers or their reasons. Okay. Because someone might say age, but they actually mean immaturity. Like, they're like, I can't date someone younger. That's a deal breaker for me. Okay. And that cancels out everyone younger than them. Okay. But what they actually mean is that, they, you know, they assume that someone younger than them would be immature. Okay. So their deal breaker is actually immaturity, not the age. Mm. You know, so people make that mistake. Another deal breaker that's very popular is um, financial stability. People okay. are like... I can't date a guy that's above 40 living at home with his family. Okay. And because they assume that it means he's lazy or he's not driven. And in a particular guy's scenario, it might be that his business just wasn't doing well, his house got burnt down. So to just kind of pick himself up, he moved back to his family's home, you know. So with that deal breaker, if you generalize it in that way, mm -hmm. you cancel out every other guy, you know. Okay. But your actual deal breaker is a lazy guy that's not driven. Mm. But you've just mixed it up and just made it, you know, any guy above 40 that lives at home. So um, how do you advise the clients that come to you on how to identify their own red flags or deal breakers? Yeah, when we ask them, because everyone, when you ask them, they would be able to tell you, oh, this is my deal breaker. 
But then you now have to find out and ask them why, you know, is this your deal breaker? Okay. So if you say, I don't like someone that, um, you know, like burps, mm. <laughs> but I have to identify why don't you like that? You know, what's yeah. the issue behind it? Do you assume that if someone burps, it means that they're not, you know, um, nice, cultured, not cultured. Yeah. that's your assumption, mm. but that necessarily isn't the fact. Some of verbs doesn't mean that they're not cultured. Mm. So you have to identify your deal breaker, the reason why you chose it, you know. Okay. Uh, now, there are quite a few very serious red flags um, that some people might not see or, or be able to identify. So when you have a couple that maybe you've, uh, is it match made? <laughs> is yes. that how you say it? Match made. Um, how do you begin to tell one party, you know, that there are some red flags in the other? Red flags, I think they're very personal to you. Mm. You're able to identify, I mean, there's sometimes when yeah. your friends are able to identify red flags that you're not able to. Yeah. But red flags are very personal because we won't go on those dates with you. So okay. we won't see those behaviors and those things. Yeah. You have to notice them and realize that, is this something I can deal with? Is this something that means more than it is? You know, so you have to identify that for yourself and decide, you know, do I want to continue with this or not? Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, online, uh, how online relationships have become. Social media, apps of all shapes and sizes, chats, emojis, um, and the reality of physical relationships now. Um, I'm wondering how you're able to identify a, a, a deal breaker or a red flag online. Um, because I, I think it's, it's, it's different when they actually physically come mm -hmm. together and have a, a first date. Mm -hmm. I think online is still a personal thing. Okay. We have to look out for certain things, like how the person describes themselves, okay. you know, how they describe what they do. Mm. More importantly, you don't really listen to what they're saying, but just how they say it. Okay. So you have to just kind of really be, you have to be smarter than those days of dating, because everything mm. now, online is very vague. It can be mm. very hidden, you know, in between the lines. So you have to be more skillful while dating now than mm. those days where you have to just meet up with the person uh, let, let's talk a little bit about long distance um dating um and relationships now there could be someone who is everything ticks all the boxes but mm -hmm. they just live in another country and that could be either a red flag or a deal breaker for for one party and maybe uh for the other how have you been able to work with couples like that well recently we had that happen there was a guy and he was like they just broke up he was okay with the long distance but she wasn't okay Okay. You know, so they didn't see often. Some people can't handle long distance. Some people can. Mm. I think it's just a personal thing. Okay. Personally, I don't think I can. You know, some people want to see the person they're with often. Some people can handle long distance. You know, they do video calls. They try and find ways around it to make it work. So I think it's about just understanding what works for you and, you mm. know, trying to make ways to make it work. If you want to work hard at long distance, you have to put in that effort. Mm. You have to ask people, like, have you been in a long distance relationship? What do you do to make it work? People would give you great advices that you can, you know, help your relationship. Okay. All right. So um, I know that being a matchmaker, it's, it's a very delicate job, especially when some people's deal breakers happen to be in the bedroom. Now, from a more, should I say, religious point of view, uh, having couples actually go into the other room possibly uh, mm -hmm. to find out if that is a deal breaker. How have you been able to manage that? Um, I think people have been very personal with the aspect, so they don't really <laughs> tell us really? if that aspect was a deal okay. breaker or not. Okay. But yes, I mean, I mean, I expect that people would have that kind of um, thing. Mm -hmm. But some people always say, you know, just work at it, mm -hmm. you know, teach someone. People can always learn. Okay. You know, communicate, tell them what you like. Mm -hmm. So I think that would work if you want to put effort into the relationship. Okay. I mean, if the person ticks every other box, mm -hmm. then you definitely want to try to make sure that this aspect can be worked on. That's a big deal breaker for a lot of people if the bedroom activities are not up to par. Yeah, but then if you try, mm -hmm. you know, communicate go for classes, mm. just learn what works for both of you. Classes? Did you say work. classes? Yeah, people do have classes. <laughs> classes for bedroom activities? Yeah, people do have Okay, classes. can I get a link? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. But really, um, it, it is kind of touchy. Your job is kind of touchy in that area because a lot of people, from a religious standpoint, mm -hmm. would prefer to not have any um, bedroom activities before an engagement, at least. Yes, I've seen a lot of people say that and... Mm. Maybe it's work for them, you mm. know, because even if you're doing it before marriage, mm. you can still, you know, it can still be bad. After mm. marriage, it can still be bad. 
and the basic thing you want to do is work at it. Okay. And even if you work at it and it's not still, you know, it's still not good, mm. that's where the problem, that's that's where where the the problem, problem is. Comes. All right. So um, when have you had to tell, uh, you know, someone, you know what, this is a no-go area. Just give us one particular instance. Of course, keep names out where you've actually had to tell someone, you know what, this is not a match. Hmm. I'm not sure we've always, we're always preaching, you know, give people a chance. So we always preach the opposite, like okay. give people a chance. You find situations where a lady's like, oh, I don't like this guy because um, I don't like the way his hair is. Okay. And then you're like, well, he can always cut his hair. Okay. So give it a chance. If every other thing takes for you, mm. then the hair shouldn't be that much of a, you know, big deal. Or the guy's <laughs> like, oh, I don't like the way she laughs. You oh, know? wow. And you're like, um, okay, but every other thing is okay, right? He's like, yes. Okay, well, then give this a chance. Recently, I heard of a deal breaker. The guy went to, um, on a date with the lady, and after the movie, she stood up and clapped. And so he felt like, <laughs> to him, he said that was a deal breaker for him. Because she clapped after <laughs> the movie? He was like, if she would clap after the movie, then she would probably clap when the plane lands. <laughs> so that's a deal breaker for Oh, him. wow. I was like, if every other thing, you know, falls into place, this should be really minor. Okay. A lady too went on a date, and the guy, like, packed up his leftovers. She was like, well, I'm done, and, you know, mm. pack up my food for me. Okay. And she felt like that was a deal breaker. I think we should come to, up to a, a point system. So how many points or how many ticks do you need to have before you consider a couple of match? Oh, well, basically, it's really in your hands. At first, it used to be in our hands, okay. you know, where we'd choose for you because we would just feel like we understood what, was, what would work for you. But a lot of people are, quote, unquote, stubborn. Okay. So if you tell a lady right now that, okay, date this guy that's younger than you and you feel like it's going to really work, and she's just like, I'm never dating someone younger, there's nothing you can really say to convince her. So we decided that, you know what, we'll put it in your hands. So you okay. tell us what you want, right. and then we'll just, you know, follow through. So right. nowadays, you just kind of lead it. You know, you just list what you want, and we'll advise you, but, you mm. know, you just, we'll advise you, we'll tell you, you know. Some people always say, I don't want someone that's been divorced, or I don't want someone that has kids. We would advise you on certain things, but it will still ultimately be your choice. Honestly, this conversation has so many branches it could go <laughs> off into, but I, I have to appreciate you for coming to the studio, Thank uh, you. talking to us, the Lagos matchmaker right here <laughs> on Wake Up Nigeria. Now, I have to say, MM and Talk, where we have to continue this conversation on social media. We need that hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC activated. Ask your questions of her and let's see if she can answer a few of them. It's been a great show though, right ladies? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> Who runs Fire the world? Breathing? Girls! Yes, sir. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. It's been an amazing show. Thank you so yeah. much um, to the matchmaker. I, I can't wait to see, you know, see those comments on, match, yeah. on people sharing their matchmaking experiences. Yes. Talk about number one. <laughs> Move it out, guys. <laughs> I'm not sharing it. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to be back.